Healthy Gamer Guy. I like the name. It's kind of an oxymoron, right? So somebody sent us this guy. I haven't watched too much of him. Uh, but what I've seen of this guy is he seems to be really good. He seems to be one of these guys that's really smart. Possibly info-dominant smart. So the real kind of smart, not the fake smart. And I've watched more of these videos. The little thing hasn't updated, so don't judge me on my consume here. Just to give kind of some framework on depression and the hero's journey, right? So the, the hero's journey has been what I've been working on for three or four years now. Ever since we discovered the code, it's like, okay, great. Now what do you do? And it's like, okay, hero's journey. So it's studying people that have gone through depression, uh, existential crisis, made it through the other side, alpha whatever somebody who's in a really hard spot and now they're older they're happy they're free and how the hell did they do that right all right so to oversimplify this as well as I'm really kind of getting more in depth in each of these terms so I'm actually like writing out and defining all of these terms so you kind of got the townsfolk right townsfolk has got to be described by you kind of in your saviors your demons the symptoms for that are going to be the repetitive tidal waves so it's more like watching people in townsfolk land you're going to see them always have the same problems over and over again the same stuff we teach with uh, savior demon functions all the rest another key thing part of the equation is they have to have a mommy they have to have a roommate a spouse a government a job something to w where, where it's like uh, what is it like Saturn it shields all the asteroids from hitting Earth they need something like that where there's all this pressure and unfairness from the universe and this parent figure is blocking most of that from this child because what happens with the mommy can't be there 24 hours a day so part of the universe starts to break through it starts to get through and hits that person with unfairness and all they have are you know 1.1 saviors to deal with the problem so they keep attacking all of this whole variety of problems let's say eight different types of problems representing by the eight different functions and they just keep hitting them with the same function so eventually that wears out, a rock bottom. Now, it doesn't wear out for most people. Most people can kind of go up and down this little slide here. They can just kind of go back into coping. And a healthy gamer guy will be talking about that. Like people will get into depression and then, ah, you know what, I kind of found that I can kind of get out of it. I can go hang out with my friends, go watch a movie, or I can smoke some weed and it's not too bad. So they kind of slide up and down this hill, right? They don't get quite all the way down to rock bottom. Rock bottom seems to be something that literally you gotta be on your deathbed. You gotta break your leg. You gotta lose your job. You gotta lose all your money. Your spouse has gotta leave you. Your kid's gotta die. You gotta be stricken with cancer. It's gotta be something extrovertedly that is so overwhelmingly puts you physically on your deathbed to some degree, something like that, right? And then coincidentally, at the same time, internally, you have to be on your deathbed. And man, do I see people all day long, they miss those two. Like, I'll see people that have this, the greatest horrible external situation in their life. Their world is falling apart, but internally, they are a belligerent fucking ass. They won't stop blaming and attacking everybody else when obviously it's them. They're cornered. They're checkmated. The outside world has got them like, hey, just tap out. They won't tap out. You'll see people the other way where they have a lot of depression and death and they're collapsing, but their outside world really isn't that hard. And, and so it's like the outside world really doesn't know what to do with it. And then they don't really know what to do because like the outside world isn't really that bad. So why is my inside world so bad, right? So you got to get this com this weird, unique combination that not everybody gets to have where your inside world is finally hitting rock bottom. It's usually around 30, 40, 50, where you finally have had enough. You got to get exhausted with that. And the outside world has cornered you in. And it's just like a diamond where it creates this possibility where the person can be like, okay, I've had enough. And this is what you see in addiction recovery. And you know, how many people that are addicted to drugs make it through to where they're happy on the other side? Very, very few. So same kind of deal here. Um, then there has to be a rite of passage. So you know how we're studying the hero's journey, there's always like 17 steps or whatever it is you read online. And I think that's all true. What you need to have is lots of dynamics of steps, especially if you're gonna tell a story or do a movie. You gotta meet the wizard and there's all sorts of weird things and come back with the thing, right? All sorts of crazy steps in the hero's journey. You know, 10, 12, 13, 17, whatever, right? There's gotta be a rite of passage. There's gotta be a before or after time event. You know, again, referencing Steve-O or whatever, or any, any drug addict that you've seen, a celebrity drug addict, that in the 80s and 90s, there were crazy fucking drug addict and now they're not. They all point to a time where they had a rite of passage where they're like, I went to a Chinese prison for five years, Batman. I had to go alone in my basement for a few years. I had to go into recovery. I moved out of the country. Like there's, so I went to prison. There's something where they went down to the hardest of the hardest times in life and they had to conquer it. And they didn't come back until they had like a, uh, a virus immunity to their worst fears. Like with the ancient tribal people or ancient ancient civilizations, they'd have rite of passages that, so that the, the, the child could mark in their mind there's a before and after I'm this scared unconscious irresponsible idiot that always runs back to mommy when things are hard and I cry and complain when things are hard and woe is me when things are hard versus I now have an immune system built up where I know how to solve things when things are hard because there is a one two three four five year period of time where I was in the worst of the worst of the worst and I didn't run away I didn't tap out I didn't blame I didn't go unconscious I didn't cope I had to stay with it and therefore I built an immunity on how to solve it and there's a time and a place um Jamie Lee Curtis, she has a good one. She had a time frame, a time period in her story. And then this is what you really see, especially with the masculine sensories. They're like, 
and I'm now 17 years sober. And they start to keep a birthday, again, Christianity, born again. They have a start and stop date. They can look back and like, this is when I hit rock bottom. This is when I started to solve it. And every day, every year after that point in time has gotten better and better. And that's why they're running around like Gary Vee going, yeah, I'm not afraid of nothing. You're never going to catch me depressed or anxiety. Not that I don't have it. Just one note on that before I play the clips here. Think about that, right? So think about you're in your worst, most depressed time ever. Depression, you're somewhere down here, right? Or you got friends or family going through something like this. The thing that to really kind of put together, right? Just, just to take a future block way over here with grow and give and to connect that down to where somebody might be down here at the bottom or, or anywhere down here. So you got to realize that if you start doing life correctly, which we all want to do, we're all trying to do it, we're all seeing ourselves like, come on, I got to be getting this together by the time I'm 70. If you're really growing and giving, you're going to have more problems, more things that can cause depression and anxiety times 100 in your future self, right? So my worst depressed times when I was in junior high and high school, like suicide level depression, touch and go all the time, really, really dark, really, really bad for a lot of years, very, very intense, masculinify, imploding in on itself a very, very dark, dark, hard, hard time, right? So it's like back then in my hardest time compared to today, I have a hundred less problems than I did back then that I have now, or, you know, meaning like today, I have more challenges, more things that would cause anxiety or depression, more problems, more issues, more stuff I got to deal with, right? So it's like, well, what happened? Like, so it wasn't what I wanted down here. What I wanted is, hey, take the weight off the bar, get all this unfair stuff off of me, give me what I need, give me what I want, like make me feel better. Turns out that wasn't the answer. It was about going, all right, how do I accept this? How do I build an immunity to this? And how do I move through this and not fight against it, which causes it to build up? All right, we can talk more about this later. Let me kind of play some of this guy's clips. He's really good. But I think what happens when we have depression is as human beings, we learn how to adapt and we learn how to cope. And once we learn how to adapt and cope, we stop trying to fix the problem. Or that's because we think it's unfixable, which in turn could be the depression itself. All right, so I want y'all to think a little bit about this. Like if you've got a problem in your house and you like, manage a fix, right? So let's say that I have to like rearrange furniture so that I can plug my computer into a wall. But if I get an extension cord and I run it along the, the bottom of the floor to the next room and I don't have to move my computer, what's going to happen? Gonna die. I'm never going to move my computer. The extension oh. cord is going to be there. It's going to be a pain in the ass. My, you know, my computer is going to look disorganized and I'm never going to fix it. So the interesting thing that happens with people with depression is that a lot of them will learn to adapt, cope, and survive because they're resilient, because they're strong, because they're adaptable, because they're intelligent. And once you learn how to cope, it goes on the back burner. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about here on the first one. And that, that's a very dangerous situation. This is where I see people spend a majority of their life. Our son Cody is the greatest guy in the world. He's going to do really good, but he's only 11. Right. And, and so it's like it's funny to watch him. You're like watching a human, very pure, honest form. And like what Cody has is the blessing of unconsciousness. Like, goddamn, he can do that coping thing so well. Right. And as adults, we try and hold on to that as long as we can. Oh, you're in a hard time. You're in a hard pressure. It's like if I can just wait five minutes, I'll forget all of this. I mean, I could jump into video games. I can go do my coping thing and I, I can just forget all of this. That eventually starts to wear off as you get older. So I do think it can substantially get better. And there's good data to, to suggest this. Right. So yeah. uh, interestingly enough, the best the most um, promising data, I think, is in a sense the weakest, which is some of this data on psychedelics. So I'm not saying you guys should do psychedelics, but if no, you look you at said. the outcomes from these studies of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy, it looks like it makes fundamental changes within someone's mind and their way of thinking yep. about themselves. There's a whole video about this in, in terms of the default mode network in Dr. K's guide to depression. But there's also where what we see with meditation is that like there are fundamental changes that happen. Sometimes in psychotherapy, there are fundamental changes that happen with the way that we look at things, like with what we wake up with in the morning. And that's it right there. If you can unpack that, I believe that is so much to the answer of what exactly how you get out of depression is your worldview has got to change. Your worldview has got to update. Now I live in a world, I live in a worldview where bad things happen all the time. I remember the Jack Bauer uh, a TV series that came out in the early 2000s. Like that was one of many that really helped me accept and see the darkness in reality and expand my fake Disneyland fuck off Christianity worldview. I want to make fun of Christianity. Christianity is really good. But like I had a magic land fuck off view of reality. Like everybody does. Like, and I didn't even have it as bad as where I see most people. Like most people have the most fake land bullshit worldview that they're just born with. It's default functions, default programs, whatever. And you get to be 25, you just never double check that. You never update that. And so the real world, which has a lot of negativity and darkness in it, is just constantly crashing in. Okay, so how can I expose myself to some negative things that are part of reality and little tiny bits of the time. And so now I have a worldview that accepts much more darkness. It takes some time to update that worldview. So things like psychedelics, sure. The same mechanism of like what? Remapping 
and reframing your worldview. So when darkness comes in, you're like, I have a place for that. Sometimes when people come into my office and they're depressed, it's not their brain functioning wrong. It's their brain functioning right. Yeah. And I know it sounds kind of weird, but like if someone comes into my office and says, I have no reason to live, I live alone, I don't enjoy anything, I have no relationships, I have no job, I'm Why ashamed of myself, depressed? I've never amounted to anything in life. And the interesting thing is that like those statements could be true. Like sometimes there are cognitive distortions. There are usually some cognitive distortions, but sometimes those things are true. And so the answer true. for that person is here, take a pill, go home. That's not the answer. Yeah. The answer is like, okay, if you have no reason to live, like let's work on that. Right. The way to right. help that person's depression is it's not, it's not their brain malfunctioning. There may be some kind of malfunction in there, but that's their brain sort of telling them that this life is not worth living. Which sometimes people say like, oh, that means I should kill myself. That's the conclusion people come to. I disagree with that 100%. Don't kill yourself. Build a life that's worth living. And that's when people say, it's hard. And it's like, yeah, I know it is. That's why I'm going to help you. You don't have to do it alone. And you can't do it alone. You, you, you can't fix your car alone. You're going to need some help. You're going to need to look up on a Google. You're going to need to talk to a guy, right? You can't fix your depression. You can't fix your anxiety alone because the human brain is just this huge, complicated thing with lots of moving parts. And you can't just slap at it with your fucking savers and then cope and then hope for it to go away and then pray for somebody else. Like, it doesn't work that way. You have to figure it out because I promise you in 20 years from now, things are going to be way harder, right? If like, if you don't know how to get out of the handcuffs and the guy always has to come and cheat and get you out of the handcuffs. There's going to be some day you're going to be in the handcuffs and you're going to be all alone. Can you get out yourself? And that's the point. And that's the goal you got to get to. It's not get away from depression and anxiety. It's figure out how the hell do I get out of these handcuffs? And how do I get out faster and faster? Because if you're living like Gary Vee, you got to get out fucking 10 times a day, right?